Joe Rogan apparently is not a fan of the Jellyfish UFO video. At least that's what he told his guest on the latest episode of his podcast. His guest, quarterback Aaron Rodgers, who himself has had a UFO sighting. I'll put a link in the description. I did cover that earlier. Um, But this was quite interesting to hear Joe Rogan's comments about the Jellyfish UFO video, basically stating he's not really interested in it. So let's dig in and see why he's not interested in it. Before we get to that clip, I am going to play a short clip of the Jellyfish UFO video just to sort of refresh everyone's mind of what exactly that looked like. If y'all are new to the channel and you like content like this, please hit that subscribe button, y'all. We put out a new video every day, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. I do not miss a day. And of course, hit that like button, y'all. That really helps out the video. So thank y'all so much for the support there, vetters. And of course, comment down below. What do you think of Joe Rogan's comments concerning the Jellyfish UFO video? Now that you've had about a month to take in the video, does it still interest you? You know, still in your mind? Like, what do you, do you think about it? Like, what's going on there? Um, has it kind of lost its pull now that, you you know, the shock value has gone away? How are you look? Are you looking at it differently? I'd be curious to know everyone's comments about that. And, of course, the clip that I'm going to show you is a little bit longer with Aaron Rodgers and Joe Rogan. So they really get into just UFOs and aliens and that sort of stuff. So it's a lot of fun. So stick around for the rest of that clip. All right. Let's jump in, y'all. Okay. First thing I'm going to show is this jellyfish UFO video. And there's no sound on this, by the way. So there it is flying again. Jellyfish UAP, October 2018, U.S. Joint Operations Bake Base, <laughs> Iraq. Right, and you can see jellyfish there flying around. I mean, as far as UFO videos go, it's one of the better ones, in my opinion. I don't know why Joe Rogan isn't interested in it. I mean, it's so long, and you get to see a lot. Um, yeah, so again, I'll put a link in the description. I made a video about this. I'll put a link in the description so you can check it out. Yeah, very interesting, y'all. See, it's just flying around. All right. I still find it very interesting. It's been a lot of people trying to debunk it. I mean, goodness gracious. McWest, Corridor Crew. Uh, lots of people who honestly have done some great analysis, uh, especially the McWest crew. I mean, you may not you know, agree with the results, but they did a lot of like pretty cool analysis. This part always struck me as odd that it went over those people and they just nothing, but who knows, right? If it's that high up, you wouldn't, I mean, you just wouldn't notice. All right. Anyway, yeah, I'll put a link to the description. Let's get to this clip here. Let's stop that. Hang on, y'all. There you go. I need one of these jellyfish UAPs <laughs> and go back. <laughs> that one is the least interesting to me. How come? I just don't, I'm not interested in it. It just doesn't seem like anything. It's flying around. It just goes in the water, comes out of the water. Like, okay. Like, so what? Which ones do you like? I like the ones that move off at insane rates of speed. And that like the Tic Tac one. The Tic Tac one, I was watching this documentary on it uh, the other day. And um, they were saying that, that the footage was released because it wasn't supposed to be released. Someone recorded it. Someone recorded the FLIR footage. It, and, yeah. yeah. And someone released it. And if it wasn't for that video footage that people have tried to debunk and they try to come up, but whatever the fuck that thing is, it's showing no visible means of propulsion. It moves off at an insane rate of speed. It's documented on radar. It's documented by eyewitness accounts from multiple jets. It's documented by the, the instrumentation that's in the jets. They saw this thing. They know that this thing is operating in some way that we have no idea how to do that using conventional propulsion methods. And they said that this it's a much longer video, that what they got was only a small piece of it, and that there's actually much more of it that the government has. Whatever the fuck that thing is, like, that to me, those are the kind of UFOs I'm fascinated by. Something that can go from above 50,000 feet above sea level to 50 feet in less than a second? Like, what is that? What is that? Is that ours? Do we? Is that why it's always n- near military bases? Is that why it's over in San Diego, off the coast of the Nimitz, where the Nimitz was, was at? Is that why it's over in the East Coast, where they have restricted airspace? Is that why these things are always in these places? Is it ours? I mean, if I had 
some sort of a super sophisticated drone technology that is above and beyond what we think of in terms of what's technologically available today, I would say it's UFOs too. I would say, you know, we have out-of-this-world craft. Yeah. Yeah, but don't you, some of that um, is reverse engineered stuff. Could be. Right? That's what Bob it could Lazar be. says. Yeah. Or there could be a branch of physics. This is what Eric Weinstein has theorized. And the way he talks about it, it's, it's quite brilliant. And he talks about this one particular college in New York, one particular university that has an insane physics department. And it's also connected to this hedge fund that does like Bernie Madoff numbers that like, don't seem to make sense. But So that would be a great way to m get money for these things. And that you have this insane physics department. So you have these people, they, if you talk, like, that's one of the things that Diana Pasolka talked about in her book, about the people that are documented that are involved in these crash retrieval programs and supposedly involved in these back engineering programs. The, the amount of secrecy and their adherence to secrecy is spectacular. And this idea that people can't keep secrets, for the fuck they can't. Yeah. People who can be, keep secrets. They, what, they, do you, what, do you, what do you think is the ultimate uh, <laughs> reason for that? Because there's a lot of ideas on why they can't release it. Because like Roswell, and there's been a number of different types of Roswells, mm -hmm. which whether that was ETs that we interacted with, whether there's some sort of alliance between other, you know, uh, alien extraterrestrial races. and what, what do you think is the major fear around that? releasing that well i think there's a bunch of fears first of all someone has got to be held responsible for misallocation of funds so let's say that you have defense spending you have some private company which is uh, by the way which they all think it's private companies that are involved in defense companies that are involved in this research like the lockheed Martin yeah Royal. which yeah. are much better at keeping secrets right you know than the, the government is and that if you have a misallocation of funds and you've lied to Congress, like someone goes to jail for that. You could, we're talking about laundering, essentially. Could be hundreds of millions, if not billions and billions of dollars over decades. So who made these decisions? Did they make these decisions? Did, did Congress not know about it? So if they didn't know about it, they're gonna wanna know about it. And if they find out that you've been lying to them all this time, well, guess what, you're going to jail. So who's going to jail? Who misallocated funds? Where did the funds go? Was any of that funds filtered? Did anybody get wildly rich during this time? Was there some skimming like we think is going on in Ukraine? It, was there, you know, when you have a, a shitload of money. But who went to jail it's... when uh, Rumsfeld said on September 10th of 2001 there's $2 trillion missing? Yeah. We unaccounted for. Nobody. Nobody. Well, they, they couldn't account for, right? Is an interesting way of saying it. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody. Yeah. Well, also, the, what? Uh, okay. So, yeah, the Pentagon allocated. fails its audit every year. Yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> it's crazy. But they just hired all those IRS agents to go after. Yeah, to go after everybody. Anybody who spends more than three hundred bucks. Yeah. yeah. No, I th yeah. I mean, there's there's also conversations around how it uh, can uh, fuck with uh, religion, you know, mm -hmm. and the uh, you know the ideologies that so many people have and the belief systems if there's you know say there is extraterrestrial life and you know how many planets in the galaxy have we found now that could sustain life yeah. even in a close proximity to us yeah quite a few yeah so but the, Di diana pasolka's work what, what they're talking about is not even necessarily something from another planet perhaps something from another planet but maybe Earth? something no maybe something that's from in another dimension Maybe yeah. something that's hyper advanced that has the ability to access us and can come and go as it pleases, can go in and out. So it's basically here all the time. We just can't see it because it's multi dimensional. Yes. It's fifth dimension. It's something. Yeah. And then also, I mean, some, again, this is what Bob Lazar talked about when he was on the show. He said, if you had brought a nuclear reactor to, you know, the 1400s yeah. and showed it to people. It'd be indistinguishable from magic. They'd be like, what the fuck is that? This yeah. is sorcery. This is crazy. But now it's just normal. As time goes on, a million years, two million years from now, if somehow or another there's intelligent beings that have uh, continued this evolution of technology and innovation, they've, they're going to get to a place where it's they, they have the ability 
to do things that are unfathomable. You can't even imagine it. Your, your mind is not capable of it because you don't have a point of reference. You don't have context. There's not a pre-existing technology that leads you to make a logical bridge towards this potential. That's it's not the words like the yeah. you know they talk about some of the stories in the ancient texts and the Bible they mm -hmm. you know they don't have the words to explain yeah. like what a spaceship is it's like no it's like a chariot in the sky Ezekiel yeah when you pull up the the, the... all right so uh, <clears throat> I mean basically Joe Rogan's gonna have uh, Jamie pull up uh, Ezekiel and he spends like ten minutes reading it um, again I'll put a link in the description you can go check out the rest of the podcast it's a great conversation um, they do talk a little bit more about religion and that sort of thing and you know uh, you know what they describe seeing in the Bible or other ancient texts potentially because they didn't have the words for it seemed like magic right it seemed godly but really it was just spaceships aliens right. I mean, let's be real. If we time traveled back to that time, we would immediately see in the text that there were some crazy beings that came back, right? And it would just be us. It wouldn't really be that crazy. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I right, probably heard that theory a lot, which there's something to that. Um, thinking that, right, you have no way to describe it. So that's what you say. They're gods, right? Which is also my opinion about dimensions and this sort of thing. Um, how do we know dimensions exactly? You know, another dimension I, I, again, is that just a placeholder word we're using because we can't understand it? Um, are the aliens telling us that's where they're coming from? How, how do we know to believe them? Anyway, something I've always thought about that. I just thought, you know, if we're going to, if we're going to finally, un you know, understand that we're alone in the universe, I guess I just expected it to come from another planet, right? Like they'd show up in a spaceship from another planet. But I guess the curveball would be like either they've been here the whole time or yeah, they're popping in from another, you know, some portal from another place, dimension, maybe another place in the universe. I don't know, right? Maybe even something we just can't even comprehend, um, which is interesting. So look, I had a few thoughts about this jellyfish. Uh, you know, Joe Rogan kind of dismisses it by saying, you know, it's not interesting to me. It just goes in the water and, and out and, that, you know, whatever. Well, first of all, that, that video has never even been released. I just, you know, say it, it they have it and they're, they're going to get it out or something like that, which is fine. Um, but, like, he hasn't even seen that. Um, and also he says, like, he likes the UFO videos and it does something, you know, crazy movement and speeds. Well, Jeremy Corbell described the jellyfish UFO video as coming out of the water and shooting off at 45 degrees, you know, at an unbelievable speed. So I'm curious that Joe doesn't know that detail or just wasn't interested. And so he just stopped listening. You know what I mean? Um, that's interesting. But the Tic Tac is, you know, what, what fascinates him. Um, even though in that video, you, that, that's, you don't see any of that, but you have Commander David Fravers testimony about it. So that's interesting that Jeremy Corbell is telling Joe, hey, man, th this is this is legit. I don't know. Maybe because David Fravers firsthand and Jeremy Corbell is just saying this has got, you know, other people, other witnesses um, that have seen it. I don't know why that wouldn't hold equal weight to him because uh, he's had Jeremy Corbell on the show several times. So I don't know. And again, they're just bullshit. It's just two guys talking about UFOs and aliens and shit. So it's not really like hold them to this. Right. I'm sure he could change his opinion or give a more nuanced take on it and clarify something. That's totally possible. Right. But just his gut reaction of just yeah, not interested, just dismissing it. When, again, a lot of people, including myself, kind of thought this was a great video. Just it was long, it was something to study, something to look at, something for the whole community to get behind and take a look at. Um, so I don't know. And maybe he just means as a whole, but I think it was great just for that reason. You know, put out, people could study it, look at it, try to figure it out. Something tangible, right? Because usually all we have are stories. So it was nice to have something real. Uh, that's why I always gave props to Corbell and Nat for, uh, you know, putting that out like that, just for that reason alone. Just gives us something to look at. Okay. You decide. If you think it's bullshit, you think it's something, that's up to you. You know? So anyway... Yeah, found this. Uh, this was a good episode. Aaron Rodgers, Joe Rogan. Again, Joe Rogan talking UFOs. Uh, it's always going to be a good episode. So, yeah, curious to hear what y'all think in the comments. Again, 
sort of a newfound look at this jellyfish UFO video? Does it does it sort of lose its its shock value or you know gasp? I, I remember the first time I saw, it, I kind of gasped, you know, like holy Jesus Christ, what is that? Um, but then as things settle in, you know, start to see it maybe a little bit better. So I'd be curious if anyone's I don't know, change their mind or opinion or move the needle for themselves. I don't, I don't know. Be curious to hear that. Um, real quick, update for the channel. Um, I was thinking about doing a video about Chris Leto. I mentioned that in yesterday's video. Uh, if you don't know who he is, he runs a channel called The Leto Files. He's an F, an ex uh, fighter pilot who you know studies the phenomenon, has videos about it. Um, I decided against making the video about him. I don't really want to go into too further detail. I just didn't think it was the right thing to do considering the circumstances. So all I have to say is I wish Chris and his team the best. And I hope all my only message for Chris is, um, you know, just be thinking about the people around you that have to, you know, run the discord and run, help you with your videos and, stuff like that. Think about, think about them, you know, just, just consider them. So, um, thank y'all again for watching today's video. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Can't wait to see you guys tomorrow again, every day, 12 PM central standard time y'all. So very excited for tomorrow's video. It's going to be a good one. Yeah. You're going to want to see it. All right, y'all. We'll see y'all tomorrow. Remember every day's a gift.